Hello, YouTube. I'm going to show you guys a bunch of cool edible mushrooms that I foraged here in the Napa Valley. So I'll start with my absolute favorite edible mushroom. This is Amanita villosa. And this is a really gorgeous Amanita with kind of a pinky apricot salmon colored top that often has a thick white skull cap, which will peel off fairly easily if it's fresh uh, or if you get it wet, it'll peel off. It's not usually in small patches, it's in one big piece. It'll have these very easy to see visible striations on the edge of the cap that are present uh, even when it's a young specimen, you can still see striations on the edge of the cap uh, up until it is mature, but you always want to look for those striations. It doesn't have a well-defined skirt or annulus, so this one has barely any. It has sort of cream-colored gills as opposed to pure white, and it has a uniform-sized uh, stipe here with a narrow base and a vulva, which is sort of the, the part of the bottom of the Amanita, that wraps around and forms a sac-like vulva. It's not bulbous like some Amanitas. And you really want to pay attention to that base part of the mushroom when it has a sac-like vulva, uh, it has a hollow stem full of pith, it has these sort of creamy gills, it has these striations on the edge, it has that thick white skull cap on top. That all tells you that this mushroom is part of section uh, Cesariae, and all Amanitas in section Cesariae are edible, unlike the other deadly Amanitas, Phalloides, uh, Bisporigera, Ocreata, etc., the destroying angel type ones, and the death caps. Um, those have very different features. They have a bulbous base, they have a solid stipe, they have super white gills, uh, they don't have that thick white skull cap on top, they don't have the striation. So all that stuff really helps you identify that you have an Amanita villosa. And I love these, they taste like straw and nutty sweetness and sunshine. They're just absolutely incredible mushrooms. I'm gonna cook these up, but I just wanted to show you guys kind of some of the features of these mushrooms um, just so you can start to learn them and recognize them yourself. I've got a really nice big chonky boy here too. This is kind of a funny looking mushroom. I don't know if this reminds you of anything. Uh, a little bit for me, but you know, everyone is different. So pretty cool. Velosa. Uh, we also have some gorgeous candy caps. So this is Amanita rubidus. Normally I find these out on the coast under tan oak or dug fir pine, but here in Napa I can find them growing with the live oaks, which is pretty cool. They're not quite as aromatic as the ones I find on the coast, but they do get larger. Uh, so I'll find these under live oak in the duff. Um, they have a white latex that stains kind of clear, doesn't really stain a dark color. Um, they smell like maple. That is primarily how I tell what these are, but I also want to make sure they don't have latex that stains yellow because there is a toxic look-alike. It's a little more pinky on top, has more zonate rounded uh, circles on the cap, and that's uh, Lactarius xanthogalactus. This is Lactarius rubidus. Um, these smell like maple and they're absolutely awesome. So one of my sort of favorite looking, crazy weird metal looking mushrooms, these are Elfin Saddles, or Helvella dryophila, dryophila. Um, these are sort of related to morels. Uh, they have these fluted, weird, white um, stems and these sort of invaginated, folded black caps. Um, importantly, unlike a morel, these are not hollow inside. They continue to kind of look like this, invaginated and folded and weird when I cut them open. Uh, if I tried to eat these straight up, especially raw, they'd be toxic. Um, if I did a little pan saute, they might make me ill if I ate too many of them. Uh, they do contain geromitrin or monomethylhydrazine, which can be kind of toxic to your system. What I do with these is I will boil them a couple times before I go to try to eat them. Uh, and I would like to boil them outside or sometimes I'll pour boiling hot water over them outside and let them sit for like five, 10 minutes, kind of blow off some of that toxin and then I'll bring them inside and cook them again. So I do several stages of cooking before I eat them. You can also dry them out they'll drive off most of the toxin and then use them later like you would a morel in a cream sauce. But these are pretty cool, I like them. Uh, I have a beautiful little purple uh, western deceiva, deceiver, the uh, Lacaria amethysta occidentalis. It has these beautiful purpley gills and a bit of purple there on the stem base. Um, these are technically edible, but they have this very fibrous stipe and really only the caps are good. Um, I wouldn't pick this as food most of the time, unless I'm really desperate, but they're pretty cool, and I've heard in Mexico they actually make ceviche out of the caps. Uh, and then, these are not edible, but I just think they're really cool. I have some hygroscopic earth stars. 
or Astria species. They're not true Geostrum Earth stars. Um, but these kind of fold in on themselves. You can see they're starting to fold in. And then you get them wet and they, f they pop right open. So that happens really fast. It happens in about an hour or two. They pop open and it takes them a couple days to dry out and shrivel down. So those are really cool. I found all of these here in the Napa Valley under live oak. And I'm going to go ahead and cook all these Amity Velosa. I'm going to dry out my candy caps and I'll probably dry out these elephant saddles as well. Um, one thing I want to do here is cut some of my candy caps uh, apart from the stem so that I can cook the caps and the stems somewhat separately. Uh, I don't always do that, but the caps and the stems do have fairly different textures and flavors. So sometimes I will separate them. Um, and I think I might do that this time just to kind of give them their own distinctive treatments. Uh, I mean, I'll cook them both the same, but they have like such different flavors and textures that uh, it can be worth it to kind of separate them out. The stems are pretty solid and have a sort of squid-like texture when they're all cooked, uh, whereas the caps are softer and a little meatier and sweeter, quite a bit sweeter. Uh, so hang on just one sec. I realized I got to grab something, but I'll be right back. Okay, we're here, and we're going. All right, so I'm gonna take this big bad boy here, I'm gonna give this a chop. Okay, so we have our stems, we have our caps, and we're gonna kinda cook them separately. Um, this is a really big fatty stem here, pretty wild. Kind of a Lorraine and Bob Bobbit moment there. Um, okay, so cut this. It's got a hollow stem here, pithy bit in the middle. I'll do one more, one more stem that's not quite as thick, so you can see that a little better. Okay. This has a hollow, pithy stem. So, see that? Sorry, I was trying to cut one-handed film a little bit easier if I use two hands and I can actually cut like I know what I'm doing rather than just trying to smash all my mushrooms. So they do kind of have fibrous stems. If you're not careful, um, you will cut them in a way that makes them kind of shatter. And I don't want that. I want them to stay nice big whole pieces when I go to cook them because they'll have better texture, mouthfeel that way than if they're all kind of broken apart. I'm trying to maintain the texture of the mushroom as much as possible here. All right, that's awesome. Very cool. So we'll go ahead and uh, Start cooking up all our stems here. Actually, you know what? I, f I feel like I go through this every time. I always mean to separate. No, I am. I am going to cook these separate. I will, I will do them in two separate pans every time I get lazy and put them in the same pan, but I like cooking them separately. So we're gonna, we're gonna try that out. Okay, I'll bring you guys over here, show you the pan. We're gonna dump all of our stems in. Make sure I don't pick up any of the little, little bits of junk on the board here. Okay. 
Okay. Getting there. I got one more stem I gotta cut up. There we go. So I'm gonna put a little bit of salt on here. And just let that kind of do its thing for a minute or two. Um, I'm gonna bring you guys back. So I wanna show you cutting up the caps here. So this is probably the skankiest cap that I picked, but it's still in pretty good shape as mushrooms go. I'm just picking up some of the velosa here. Cutting the caps in pieces, that'll fry up nice. Get them really nice and sweet. Not all of these are in prime condition, but they were good enough for me to harvest and take home. And I know from experience that they're going to be delicious no matter how how they look. So pretty excited to have these again. These are my favorite edible mushroom, and I haven't had them since last year. So That's a pretty cap. You look at that. Huh? <coughs> oh yeah. Wow. Beautiful velosa. You can eat these raw, and I uh, I do actually like them raw. I'll I'll do sort of a version of a carpaccio with these kind of thing. It's quite good. Shaving a, a nice little uh, cap like this is a really good way to uh, do them. Okay, this one, God, this is such a thick, chunky mushroom. This would have been a really perfect one to shave down for a carpaccio if I was going to do them raw. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the stove. And we're going to put these caps in a separate pan. Let me pop this up here a little bit so you guys can see the action on both pans. Okay. Yeah. So these are starting to break down. You hear how they squeak? I love to hear that squeak. Here are some candied yellow feet mushrooms that I did earlier. So I combined equal parts brown sugar and white sugar and water and then added a couple of candy caps and a whole bunch of yellow fit chanterelles and then cooked them down and that's what they look like they're delicious on ice cream uh, oh man these amity velosa smell so good i really i, I wish you had smell vision it smells like like buttered popcorn and there's no butter there's no oil involved in this yet it's just a dry fry but they smell so sweet 
And it tastes sweet too. I mean, I just love, 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 love these mushrooms. They taste so good. I also really like to cook using a chopstick. Uh, it kind of gives me a lot of control and ability to manipulate things in the pan. I'll take a pot. So I just gotta let the heat do the work to break stuff down, you know? So I wait until everything gets kind of like a little bit of color, a little bit brown. And like I said, you can hear the, some of the mushroom pieces kind of squeaking as they move them around. And that's, that's a layer of water evaporating steam that's squeaking. And once I don't hear that kind of squeakiness anymore, and once all the water's cooked out of these, then I can go ahead and add some butter and salt. Well, I'll add butter and more salt. I already put some salt in. Because I do want to break these down and kind of cook out all the water as much as possible. And I do sometimes like to do this in non-stick because it makes the dry fry portion easier. There's less stickage uh, and or this, the brown stuff that does adhere to the pan ends up being a little bit easier to get off when I'm deglazing. But you can definitely do this in cast iron as well, and I often use my cast iron. Uh, I'm using two smaller pans because I'm doing the stems and the caps separately because I like doing them separately, but I really get lazy and just cook them together. So It's my first time cooking Velosa of the year. I'm going to try to do it right. Okay, so these are starting to stick a little bit, so I'm going to use just a tiny bit of the neutral oil. Sunflower, peanut, canola, something like that. Those are still a little wet, so I'm going to let those keep going. So I don't know, I don't want a lot of oil. I don't want to drown these or anything like that. I may add butter later, I may not. For now, I just want to make sure that they're not sticking to the pan. That's the main thing. These are a little sticky, as you can see. They're not all moving freely, but there's some big wet pieces. So I don't want to put the oil in quite yet. Getting there though. Very close. Just just a touch. We'll add a little bit more salt to both pans at this point. So that little bit of oil is going to help most of the stuff from sticking. And what I want to do now is just really focus on frying them kind of low and slow. So I'll turn these, I had them sort of medium high, I'm going to turn them down a little medium low. And I just want to cook them over that medium low heat until they really get nice golden brown delicious. It's pretty hard to overcook a mushroom. Uh, especially these. You can pretty much dry them out, but even then, they probably still taste pretty good. Uh, but I like to really, really lean into that golden brown delicious thing with these mushrooms. It's, it pays off. It's, they're just so, so tasty. And it smells so good in here. I'm sure the chopsticks can really help me, like, maximize that nice browning surface here, too.
Okay, those are getting nice and browned off. Here are my elephant saddles and candy caps ready to go in the dehydrator. So I'll do these at about 115, probably overnight. Let me turn it down a little bit. Give them a nice turnover here. Oh my goodness, look at that golden brown and deliciousness. Wow. A little bit of grass off of there. Come on. These do have sort of a, a slightly grassy hay-like flavor, but it's very sweet, nutty, and, and delicious. And like I said, the caps and the, and the stems have a, a marginally different flavor. And definitely different texture and slightly different flavor. The caps definitely have more flavor and the stems are more textural. It's kind of cool to treat them differently. them around so everybody picks up a little bit of that nice butter flavor. Alright. Look at how golden brown delicious those look. Wow. Okay. Give them the last little bit of heat here to finish them off and then we'll we'll finish off with a taste test. Thanks for hanging in here with me. Getting this late night cooking done. Gosh, these look good. Oh, man. I am so looking forward to trying this. Every year I get a little freaked out when I find these because it's kind of scary to think about eating an Amanita. Over the years, I've gotten more and more sure of myself. And I'm absolutely positive when it comes to this mushroom. I'm certainly not going to eat something that I'm not totally positive about. It's still uh, intimidating to consider eating something that does have a toxic lookalike. Um... You know, most of the mushrooms I eat are pretty unambiguous. And this one has some ambiguity to it. Uh, you just want to be really, really sure. And that's part of why I started this video, by showing you all of the features that define this as an edible mushroom, make it part of section Cesariae. Uh, you want to be really, really careful with Amanitas. This is something only for advanced hunters and foragers. But I think that everyone should learn about it. And that's part of why I'm presenting it here on my channel. Okay, just about done with these. And boost the heat for just just a moment on each one of these. I turned it down pretty low because I didn't want to burn the butter. Being kind of conservative. And now I'm gonna jack it up high, just at the very end to see if I can 
spur on just a, just a little bit more delicious browning. But not burning that butter. You gotta be really careful. Once you add butter, you're prone for burning. That's part of why I use the neutral oil initially and not all butter, because I want to cook these quite a while and really, really develop that golden brown umami flavor that makes you so sweet, special, and absolutely delicious. So I've been hunting these mushrooms probably for the last four years or so. Uh, and they always freak me out, but I've learned them pretty well. I have specific trees in Napa that I find them under. I feel very confident in my habitat, my ID, and, uh, and the payoff. Oh man, is the payoff worth it. Turn the heat off, take a look at these. Okay. So let's turn from the two different pans here. So I did the same flavor treatment on both these for now. I could have done different things, but they have a fairly similar taste. It's mostly the texture that's kind of distinct from one another. Um, the other thing I want to do is add one last little bit of salt to both of these, uh, both these pans. So I've seasoned three separate times while cooking. One right when they went in the pan. Another one, when I started adding uh, some of the fat, the oil, and the butter. And then one last time here, just to kind of give them that last tiny bit of salt, that last little bit of crunch, right as I'm going to serve them to eat them. Uh, so let's, let's try the stem here first. Nice little brown piece of stem. Lots of, lots of good browning on that. Blow it off, it's pretty hot. Mmm, yep. Bouncy, chewy, sweet, nutty, grassy element there. Mmm, it's good. It's not super deep or savory. It's more kind of chewy. But I'm really excited to try one of these cat pieces because the deepest umami in a mushroom tends to come from the gills. So that's why the caps have some of the best flavor. Um, this piece here kind of looks like my like ultimate piece of Velosa. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and try this piece out. Pretty excited for that, huh? Yeah. All right. Let's go to shot. One last little look at it. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah, we hear you, Tiger Paw. Mmm. Oh, that has so much sweetness and depth of umami and just absolutely spectacular. Sweet, nutty, caramel, brioche, popcorn, baked goods, pastry, you know, all the, all the flavors like that, but still kind of, you know, savory and mushroomy. Uh, just what an incredible mushroom. Uh, it's so cool. So, anyhow, that's that. I'm going to let this cool down for a little bit, pop it in the fridge, and we're going to put all this other stuff into the dryer, and uh, I will bid you guys adieu. But thanks for hanging out. Appreciate you. If you'd like to learn more from me, check out my website, fascinatedbyfungi.com. I have a podcast here on YouTube. It's also on Spotify, Colin. Google, Apple Playlists, all those kinds of things. Um, I have a Patreon. I have merch on my website. Uh, please follow me on all different platforms. i got a Instagram, a Facebook, 
Uh, we're here on YouTube, TikTok, uh, Pinterest, Patreon, all the stuff. So anyhow, be well, guys. Adios.